When a user requests access to a specific DNS zone or host, we need to make sure that that is going to be a request that is secure and encrypted. And we can do that using DNS security or DNSSEC. So in order to do this, we need to set this up in Active Directory on a domain controller by going to Tools and DNS. And this works on all domain controllers from 2016 forward. So if I go to my domain controller DNS, I can see I've got my forward lookup zones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my zone and I'm going to choose DNSSEC and choose to sign the zone. Now we get this wizard that pops up. So I'll just go through the wizard. We need to set up the key signing key. And the first time you sign any particular zone, you're going to be seeing these options with the customized zone signing parameters, which basically creates this whole new key. So I'm going to click next, choose the DNS server is IS-DC1. That's the name of my particular server. And it's going to be what's called the key master, which means it's going to be used to sign this zone. And if I have another server that's going to be running this, then I can go ahead and choose it now. But most likely, if this is your first one, you're going to be choosing the one you're on. Now I'm going to click Next and choose to add my key signing key. And this is going to be it's the first time you create any of this. And so I'm going to choose the Generate New Signing Keys. If I already have one from a previously set up one, then I'll be given that option. Click Next, Next. Now I have the zone signing key. So once again, just click add, choose the defaults if you'd like. You could also change the key length to be a higher amount, but typically the 1024 bits is just fine for this type of thing. Click next. And I'm going to choose the default NSEC3, which is going to prove the non-existence of a resource record, RR. So if there is no resource record when you're trying to make a request, then it's just going to go ahead and say there is no resource record for that. It's not going to give you a false record. I'm going to choose the default enable automatic update of trust anchors. Basically, this is a cryptographic key for a signed zone. And it's the public portion of that information that gets sent off to the client. So click next. I'm going to choose the defaults here, but you can go ahead and change it if you'd like. This is basically the time to live for the records and the secure polling, that kind of thing. And usually 3600 is a plenty amount of time for the amount of seconds that you can leave that on. And we'll click next. And now it's going to sign that zone. So the point of all this is to make sure when a client goes to make a request that it's going to be getting information from the zone that it expects to get it from, not from a hacker. And now that that's done, we have to go and tell the client to trust this zone. So now I'm going to go into Tools and Group Policy Management, and I'm just going to create a quick group policy object that tells the clients that it's OK to trust this zone. So I'm going to choose my default domain, and then I'm going to create a new policy. And I'll just call this one DNS Sec Policy. And I want to create it at the root because I want to make sure that all different users are going to have to go through this uh, trusted DNS zone. So now I'm going to choose Edit. And this is going to be a computer policy because we want it to affect all computer policies. And then we want to choose under Policies. We want to go to Windows Settings. And then Windows Settings, I'm going to go to Name Resolution Policy. So this has to do with DNS right here, DNS Sec or Security. So under the suffix, I'm going to put in the name of my domain that I just signed. I'm going to enable DNS Sec in this rule. And I'm going to require that DNS clients check that name and address data has been validated by the DNS server. And now I'm going to click Create. And it should show up in this bottom section, which it just did. And now I'm going to apply it. Without the group policy, you're not going to really affect anything on the client side. They're not going to only look to trusted DNS security signed zones. And in this particular case, it is now signed and the clients are going to get this policy. So now I need to go to my client. In this case, it's going to be a Windows 11 client. And you can either restart the computer or do a GP update force. 
I'm in my Windows 11 client, logged in, and so now I'm going to open up a Windows terminal and just do my GP update force to make sure that this gets applied. And then I'm going to just double check that it's going to be applying this for this particular zone and that it's secure. So now I'll type in GP update slash force. And I could also just sign out and sign in or restart the computer. And typically that will show that it's applied. And just to confirm it's applied, we need to do the GP result slash R. So GP result slash R. And you have to do this as the administrator in your command prompt or PowerShell because it won't show the computer policies without it. And there it is. There's my DNS sec policy. So now I'm going to clear the screen. And you can see I'm in PowerShell mode because the PS shows in the upper left-hand corner. So I can type get dash DNS client NRPT policy. And here we can see for the infosec.int domain that my DNS security validation is required. Now we're going to do another command. And that's going to be the resolve-dns name and the name of the server with the infosec.int host name. We can see the type is going to be an A, which is an A record in the DNS server. And the server is also going to be is-dc1. And we're going to check that DNS security is set up to be working and OK. So I hit Enter. And you can take a look. You can see that the name of the domain and the host record is right here. The signer is going to be the name of the domain, so that is correct. You can see that all the different settings that we set up earlier have now shown up here in this record. And this proves that any requests that I make of my DNS server for this particular domain are going to be secure because I'm only going to be receiving requests from my trusted server, that trust anchor that was set up earlier. So that is how we set up DNS security and the group policy object for our Windows domain. In this particular case, I was using a Windows 2022 uh, standard server, as well as a Windows 11 professional computer.